So now that we've created our SSH key, we're ready to uh, create our cloud virtual machine. So once you've created your digital ocean account and logged in, you should see a screen that looks something like this. And we're going to start by creating a new project in DigitalOcean. Um, this is just a way that they organize your resources. It's not like a technical thing. It's just a DigitalOcean thing. So I'm going to call mine Django, or whatever, Django Toot. And I guess for that, their marketing survey, it's a web application. Cool. So we're going to create a project. Um, once that's done, we've got our project and they'll say, get started with a droplet. So in digital ocean land, um, a droplet is just a computer that you rent from them. So that's all this is. We're asking them to create a virtual computer for us, which for all intents and purposes is going to act just like a regular computer. So you at this point will be assailed by like 5 billion options of things you can do. And most of them don't matter. Um, I'll take you through what we are going to um, select though. So here, the distributions, this is really asking what flavor of Linux do you want? And um, I would say the simplest thing to do is just to use Ubuntu, which is uh, pretty common and probably the easiest to deal with. Um, the things that you'll find different, different between Ubuntu and say uh, CentOS or FreeBSD are things like uh, what packages are already installed, what package managers um, are available, things like that. So Ubuntu is just going to have the le least friction for us. Um, for example, it will come with Python 3 already installed, which we want. Um, so what sort of plan do we want? Standard, sure, whatever. And now the question is, how big of a computer do we want? And the three things that they're saying we can change are how much um, memory is available, how many CPUs uh, are available, the amount of disk space, and how much uh, network transfer we get. And the default here is $40 a month, which uh, we don't want to pay. We want to go across here to $5 a month. So when you're running Python web applications, you'll find that the first thing that will become a bottleneck will be memory um, on these cheaper servers, at least. So um, I think you'll find if you're running a Python web app with a couple of other services, a gigabyte becomes too small. So this is where you will um, sort of start to run into problems. But to just run a simple Django web app, a, gig a gigabyte's uh, heaps. One CPU, um, not really a big deal. Web applications typically don't do a lot of processing and they're just spending a lot of time pulling things out of the database and sending them to the user. So you're usually not going to be in a position where the CPU is uh, giving you a problem if you don't have much traffic. Um, 25 gigabytes of disk space is heaps and uh, a thousand gigabytes transfer is a ridiculous amount. So that's all good. So let's select our $5 a month option. Um, block storage, don't care. Data center region. Um, this will just affect the amount of latency between you and your um, server and between your users and your server. So you just want to find something that's close to your users. Um, sure, New York, whatever. We don't care about any of this stuff. And this is where it's important, authentication. How are we going to log into the server? So we want to click new SSH key. And they're going to ask for our public SSH key. Um, luckily, we've already created one. So we can go into git bash and we can um, cat, which is sort of print to screen, home.ssh idrsa.pub. You might be wondering how I'm uh, making these letters appear on the screen without actually typing them. I'm pressing the tab key. So I'm typing cat squiggly dot s and then I'm pressing tab and you'll see it auto completes for me, which is nice. Um, I tab rsa. If I tab, you'll see there's two options and it says, which one do you want? I press dot and it knows dot pub. So there's our SSH key. And we want to copy the whole thing like that. Right click, copy, go here, control V, paste it in. Um, 
Cool, and we'll give it a name. Let's call it uh, Matt Tut and add it. And so this public key will be placed onto the server in the right file so that um, the server knows that we are able to log in with our private key and that we can be a root user. So that's all set up. How many droplets do we want? One, sure. A host name, totally arbitrary. But I'm just going to call it Django Tut because why not? Uh, tags don't care, project don't care, backups don't care. Let's create a droplet. So now um, somewhere in a data center in New York, um, they're creating a Linux Ubuntu virtual machine for us. And when that's done, we'll get an IP address. And once we've got the IP address, that's, uh, that's it for now. We'll be able to uh, do the rest of this later. There we go, we're done. And our IP address is 64.225.23.131. And we can just copy that to our clipboard and move on to the next video.